Good evening, Facebook and YouTube land. It is I, Coward, coming to you live on this What You Play in Wednesday. Uh, today, I am joined by two amazing people all the way from the, some crazy kingdom over you know, in Texas called Anciora, Master Brian and Mr. Selena, who are going to be actually doing the teaching nights. So I just get to heckle and hang out. So, I'm going to let them do their introductions, and then we're going to get rolling with this class. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, throw them up in the comments wherever you're watching, either on Facebook or YouTube, and we'll get to them. So, welcome, guys. How you doing? Hi. Feel free to okay. introduce yourself. Uh, Tell us all about you, who you are, and why you're important. So, uh, I am Brian O'Leum. I'm a Master of the Orders of the Laurel and Pelican. I'm a court baron as of two months ago, so I haven't been to an event with my court barony, so it doesn't feel real yet. And I'm the 100th White Scarf of Onsteora, and I am not a gaming laurel. I'm a performance arts laurel. So take what I am about to tell you with the largest grain of salt. That's fair. And I, I'm Elena Weth. I was COVID elevated, COVID elevated, electronically elevated, um, May second. E elevated. I was e, e elevated. E elevated on uh, in May for largely with. Uh, work in scribal and parchment and pigment research. Um, so I'm I'm a baby Laurel and I liked this game and convinced him to start playing and so now we're here for you. I appreciate you guys because I like having having not going to teach on these because it makes it more interesting. Because you're right. Like so you guys ready to get going? We'll just jump right into this. <laughs> I will add He's, gonna, this. He's just gonna ignore the, the me yeah, calling him yeah. lazy. The heckling what? has to start. Heckling happens when the game starts, not the not, not before. Ryan. Uh, <laughs> you're fun to invite Anciorans on my streams. You guys are rude. Rude. I, right. I, I, told, you, I told you it was going to be like this. Hey, all all right. So we, thank you. We are going to talk about the royal game of Ur, also known as 20 Squares. It's called 20 Squares because it is played on a board that has 20 squares. So it's a very clever name. Uh, but we'll get to why it's also known as the Royal Game of Ur here in a little bit. But uh, there have been different variations of 20 Squares games found over the centuries. And it really just depends on how things evolved into a certain area or from a certain area. Uh, what we're going to be playing with is the most well-known board type of 20 Squares. Uh, so the Royal Game of Ur is a two-player racing board game where players roll dice to get their game pieces both on and off the board. So there's chance because you're rolling the dice, but there's also strategy in how you can plan your moves and you can even kind of capture your opponent's pieces. It's not capture like in drops games, uh, but it's capturing almost like in Senate where you overtake the piece, uh, except for in or you knock it completely off the board. And it has to restart all the way from the beginning. So it's a little different than Senate but it's got some similar characteristics. Uh, the game also has a lot of drinking and gambling elements that you can add to it. Uh, and some context clues have pointed to it being used as a fortune telling device. Uh, in this, we're just gonna stick to the basic gameplay. So we're not gonna deal with the drinking or gambling or fortune, the, the fun stuff. Uh, that, that can be another time. That, that can be another time when I've read that paper, but oh, that's that's a lot of, a lot of paper. Uh, for that one. Um, but as I said, it's kind of similar to Senate in some ways. Uh, it's it's not exactly the same, but it, there's some similarities. And it's also known as a precursor to backgammon in some places. And that's not because backgammon evolved from Ur, but what we saw was this game was pretty popular. And then backgammon became much more popular and people kind of stopped playing 20 squares and backgammon kind of took over and then actually persisted whereas Ur pretty much died off for 99.9% .9 of the world. So the picture here is uh, one of the reproductions of the board. Do you want to talk about that sure. here? Um, so what we have is a reproduction of one of the boards that was found. There have been several boards found in um, ancient burial in tombs, largely. Um, some we have found have been actually on the other side of a Senate board. So we know that they were played uh, contemporarily. So with 
er, you have the game pieces, your players, the black or white, and then you have a uh, triangle, yeah, tetrahedral dice, D4. D4s. Um, and the D4s actually have two of the four corners marked uh, with pips. So when you roll your D, your, when you roll your dice, if the marking is up, that counts as one. If it's uh, not marked, then it's zero. So ones or zeros. So you could actually play a version of this with a D4 where you say like evens are a one and odds are zero, something to that effect. Um, also, you'll notice on the board, there are a lot of decorations. From what we can tell from the rules we have um, found, they are largely decorative, just, hey, look, it's pretty. However, there are rosettes in corners, which I don't think I can show you very well. Maybe here, four corners in the center. There's a better layout yeah. in the handout. Um, those are special. Do you want me to hold that back? Yeah, uh, okay. go ahead and hold that back. We've got a section on the rule set. They're special. Uh, but there are the different symbols according to different rule sets mean different things. Everyone agrees on the rosette rules. We'll explain those when we get to the, the rule set. But as I mentioned, Ur was is not a game that persisted. It's not like chess where we've had chess. It's evolved over time a little bit, but it's kind of persisted when it started. Or something like Backgammon where they started playing it. Things have been altered but it's still in place, like your Mancala games as well. So this game actually needed to be rediscovered. Um, so after World War I, uh, sometime between uh, 1927 and 1934, they're not sure of exactly when, but British archaeologist Leonard Woolley uh, was on an excavation of the ancient Sumerian city of Ur. This is where the royal family was buried. He was specifically in their tomb, and he found two boards, uh, the uh, reproduction of one of those boards is the one that we were talking about a minute ago. So we know that these games are therefore dated to around 2600 to 2400 BCE. So roughly uh, 2500 BCE. So that would be 5500 years ago. Thereabouts. Am I doing my math right with my liberal arts degrees? Uh, yeah. But because it was found in the royal tomb, it started to be called the royal game of Ur. Um, we don't actually know specifically what it was called in that time period, uh, what the contemporary players of it called it, but we know it as the royal game of Ur. We also know it as 20 square games, and there are some variations on how the board is set up for those 20 square games. So it's just kind of a category of 20 square games. So that got us the board and some pieces, but we still didn't actually know what we could do to play it until about the 1980s. So there was a cuneiform tablet that was discovered in the 1880s and sold to the British Museum by a private collector. It kind of sat there on display or in the archives for about 100 years until Dr. Irving Finkel, who is an absolutely amazing man, and everyone should watch all of his videos on YouTube, uh, he actually translated that tablet. Uh, he also translated photographs of a tablet that was destroyed in World War I. So the tablet had actually been sent uh, to a photographer in Paris for him to take pictures of the tablet. The, in the bombings in World War I, the tablet was actually destroyed completely, but the photographs remained. So they were able to translate that other tablet based on the photographs. And so from this, Dr. Finkel started to reconstruct the actual elements of gameplay. Yeah, he's actually an expert, like the world's foremost expert on cuneiform writing. So he does actually have a couple of YouTube videos on how to learn to write cuneiform. And um, he's internationally renowned for his, his translation work. Um, so we have talked a little bit about the equipment. Did you want to do that? Um, yeah, so we showed you the board. We showed you that uh, there's seven game tokens and there are four tetrahedral die or D4 that are used. Uh, there's some variation of the games based on the number of D4 used, the, the type of dice used, whether it's actually the D4 or whether it's some form of dice stick. And of course, you can modify the game by using uh, different a different number of tokens, more or less. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we are really just sticking to the seven token system. Yeah. So where are you going? I don't know. Where are you going? I'm driving blind. Throwing me off. You're throwing me off. All right. So uh, we did talk a little bit about the board. The board is 
set up into three sections. There's three rows of four and then three rows of two that we saw. And then there's a little two square bridge that connects those sections together. Each square is really highly decorated. That's actually all inlaid. Uh, in the original pieces, it was inlaid wood. Um, I've seen people create it with wood burning, with just painting. So there are ways to make these incredibly intricate and beautiful boards. And so that's really cool how people um, can alter it just based on looks. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of debate on what each of these decorations means. Uh, I've seen different things about if it's on this certain picture, that means you can stack tokens on top of each other, where traditionally you can't stack. Um, some are their safe spaces. Um, but all the rule sets that we've seen agree that the kind of rosettes that are near the corners-ish, uh, we'll go through and we'll show more specifically where those are. But all those rosettes mean you get to one roll again, and two, you are safe from capture or being knocked off the board. So that's the board itself. Uh, there are also seven tokens, typically a black set and a white set. But if you're making your own board, all you need is things that are different from each other. So if you just go to the craft store and get stones, you get blue stones and clear stones or whatever. It can be anything you want. The set that was found had uh, seven tokens of each color with five dots on them, forming that X pattern that you saw. Um, we're not entirely sure, as far as I'm aware, what those meant, what, what any significance there was to those pieces. I have heard some speculation on there actually were different uh, patterns on the tokens, and that stipulated when you can move those tokens or um, what if a certain role was required to place a certain token on the board. Um, but most rule sets don't use any of those rules. It could be really interesting if you changed up the rules to where you had to get token one on first and then off first. You couldn't get token one, uh, you couldn't get something off the board before token one was off the board. Um, but most rule sets don't worry about that. Yeah, I've seen one rule set that had a house rule that you had to roll a one to get a play to get a token on the board and then you could play through but if you didn't roll a one you couldn't get on um also part of the fortune telling aspect of things um some of those differing there was one set that had a different uh animal or astrological type for the mm -hmm. for the pieces and that played a role in how the fortune was read um, so that's another reason why the, the decorations may differ. So it's one of those where there are different layers to how you can play it. There's the base rules where everyone can just enjoy it. But, and that's what we saw in those other cuneiform tablets, which I talk about a little bit later, but I'll jump to this now, um, where there are so many different ways and alterations to this game for those higher level players just above the base set with those different house rules. Um, but so moving on to the dice, we talked a little bit about this. Usually okay. it's 4d4. Um, they look like pyramids. Elena explained how they're they're marked. But you will notice that in the, we'll scroll back up to that, in the set, that's the reproduction set, you'll notice there are only three dice on that. This is a weird variation where instead of using four, dice and if a painted side is up that counts as one uh, this uses three dice where if the painted side is up that counts as one but if all four non yeah if all sorry if all three non-painted sides are up that counts as four it's a really weird alteration of how the dice are yeah, used I mean for about a thousand years because we had the Ur and then we also had a board in King Tut's tomb, um, which was a thousand years later. Well, and the cuneiform tablets were about um, 2,200 years yeah, so after. So it lasted several thousand years. Uh, it lasted about a thousand. It, it was about a thousand. Well, give, we'll or, give or take 500 years. We'll go back and see what Dr. Fink said. <laughs> yeah. um, my point really was that Rules rules change, house rules happen, um, and so it's really interesting to see how the variants bear out, you know, like you said, 4,500 years later. So There's actually this, a reason for why using the three versus the four dice, because it removes the zero. If you use a three and three blanks become a four, 
then you it's a one to four combination, not a zero to four. I think that's the. So, yeah, but also getting rolling a zero is is a yeah you lose a turn. It's it's right. very advantageous for your okay. opponent. Like it's awesome when your right. opponent rolls a zero. Yeah, and so that's that's one of the points here. If you're using four dice, your roll combinations are zero through four. If you're using three three dice, your rolling combinations are one through four. So it really changes up the game because you can be on a really good roll. When I've done this, I'm like, all right, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Zero. Crap. And that yeah. completely missed my opportunity. So I, th but I think where we were differing on the time frame is this board, this particular board only lasted about a thousand years, I think is what we're saying. And then, well, we'll have to go back and see what Dr. Finkel says. Okay. Then. Um, but the cuneiform tablets did also talk about using sheep or ox knuckle bones uh, as dice. We know that sheep knuckle bones were commonly used as mm -hmm. dice, but ox knuckle bones were really just too large and unwieldy to yeah. use. They're big and they were assumed to be like a multiplier or uh, have some other special reason for them. So yeah, there are various ways that this can be altered using multipliers, like Elena said, and it's a very complex system. I have not found any program that uses that complex system. It's all just the base rules. Um, but that's what uh, that's why the base system is the easiest um, because it's just it gets kind of out of hand and unwieldy, and there are so many different rules when you use those multipliers. But there is kind of a, a chart almost set up in one of Dr. Finkel's papers that kind of goes through those details. And it is really complicated. Um, but another variation on the game uses uh, four-sided stick dice instead of tetrahedral dice. And uh, part of this is really weird for this area because those type of dice are not found anywhere else. And there are also differing uh, finds of the stick dice being two sides have a mark and two sides are unmarked versus sides being marked one through four. So that could also lead to either you're only using one dice or one die, one of the stick die to roll your one through four, or you used multiples and there was using those multiplier rules that Elena mentioned. But that's that's a lot of the dice. We're, we're just gonna be using the 4D4 system because in large part, that's what the computer program uses. So one of the coolest things about this game is how we learn about the gameplay. And the, the TLDR is that the tablet we have is actually a, a discussion on how to like gamble and cheat at the game. So we've inferred the rule set based on uh, in large part, these rules for gambling and drinking, um, which is, it's it's a lot of fun. So yeah, because this was kind of advanced rule set because it was gambling and drinking, we don't have the base rules. Presumably, the game was so popular and so well known that they didn't have to write down the base rules. So what people have had to do is kind of reconstruct the rules from what we can glean from these tablets. And that's why there's some variation on different pathways. Um, but the rules espoused by uh, Dr. Finkel and, and some other games experts are kind of the full set known rules that everyone kind of agrees to, but there are some variations. Um, but starting, uh, typically you roll uh, the dice to see who starts first. Um, it's either whoever rolls the highest or there are some variations where Whoever rolls one first gets to go first. If there are ties, you just start again. Basic, you know, how do you start a dice game kind of agreements. Uh, but then you get on to actually playing the game. You Everyone starts with all of their pieces off the board, and you roll the dice mm -hmm. to get to put um, your pieces on the board. And this is it's also important that uh, rolls cannot be split among tokens. So like, there are some games where you can pick and choose, uh, but if you roll like a two, you have to move one piece two spaces. You can't move one piece one space and another piece uh, 
another space. So th that's when you're using the basic set zero through four, if you roll a zero, you just lose your turn. So we, we already talked a little bit about uh, rolling, uh, but how you move the space uh, is across the pathway on the board, but only one token can occupy a space at a time, unless you're using one of those advanced um, rule advanced sets. House rules. Yeah. yeah, the advanced house rules where certain pictures let you stack tokens, but most people agree that you're not gonna be able to stack tokens. If, so if two pieces are on the same, or if, if a space is already occupied and you roll to that space, the new player takes that space and knocks the other space, uh, knocks the other piece off the board, unless you're on one of those rosette spaces. If you have no possible moves based on where tokens are placed, you have to forfeit your turn. So going on to direction, this is where there is more controversy. Um, this detailed direction is the path of RC Bell. This is the path that uh, Irving Finkel agrees with, uh, that you're, you start off the board uh, on your respective side, on the four-sided, you go down the board towards the rosette at the corner turn, and then you come back up this middle lane that includes that two-piece bridge. Yeah. And you make the other turn and get off the board. And what's cool about this is that that middle strip is the battleground. That's where you're fighting for space and you're fighting to kick your opponent off. Um, that rosette is in the middle is the safe spot where they can't kick you off. And all rosettes give you an extra turn. So that, that rosette right before the bridge is kind of the most powerful piece. And I'm almost certain you'll see when Elena and I play, it will be whoever gets that rosette feels that they're in control and they're in power. Yeah. Uh, but this uh, means that each piece has to travel over 14 spaces. There are variations that uh, mix up how many spaces you have to travel. Um, but one important thing to note is you have to exit the board on a perfect roll. You cannot roll, like if you're on this last piece over here, this last space right here, you can't just uh, roll a two and get off because it's at least one. You have to roll exact. So if you're at this rosette, you have to roll a one. If you're at this corner, you have to roll a two in order to get off. So it's kind of like the ending spaces on Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different uh, paths that have been discussed. This is not the most complex, but one of the more complex paths. Uh, and what you'll notice is it creates a lot more battleground, whereas the entire two by three section is a battleground and you have to cross this long middle section twice. Um, so that can really complicate games that can make them last a lot longer. Um, but we've, we, we played this at a, a event a few months ago, and, and we just played it backwards just to see. So we started on the two end instead of the four end. That even, just the exact same path drastically changes the game. Oh, imagine. Yeah, I, I bet. Especially when your your one gives you a second roll, right? instead of your four gives you a second roll. That would, that would really mix things up. And there's also talks on, there's also differences on even having to do another turn instead of exiting the board in the middle right here at B. Uh, turning back around on C and exiting the way you came on. So there's a lot of different variations that you can use, but this the the path by RC Bell up here is the commonly accepted pathway. But there are tons of variations that you can use. Um, we, we talked about the square. Uh, some of the pictures on the squares can be um, about that drinking game, about that gambling game, and not necessarily affect rule play uh, or... Uh, gameplay based on the rules, but there are other various changes that you can do. And capture, I touched on that briefly. It's not so much capture like with uh, chess or draughts where it's completely removed from the board forever. It just knocks you off the board and you have to start all the way from the beginning. So Cal mentioned that this, uh, this class may include table flipping. And that's gonna be why if Elena takes a bunch of my pieces, I'm probably going to flip tables, which is a problem because I'm in a room that has no tables. You should have brought you like a little, a little mini table, you know, put on the desk. 
I try not to encourage. Coaster flip. Yeah. There you go. Um, so the, the goal of the game is to get all your pieces on and off the board before your opponent. Uh, as I mentioned, you do have to roll an exact roll to get you off the board. You can't. It's not like backgammon where if if you roll a high number, you can get your piece off from you know anywhere within that section. Uh, you have to roll that exact number. And that's you know most of the rule set. It's kind of complicated to explain games. Uh, just via chat showing you works a lot better. But just kind of a rundown. This is a highly competitive but relatively short game. Um, there is really no evidence that suggests this was played in medieval Europe or Renaissance Europe. It is an ancient game that kind of got pushed aside by more popular games. So if you are a you know high medieval persona, you wouldn't be playing the royal game of Earth. Now you totally should because we're the society for creative anachronism. So you can totally play it, but this game kind of did die off before most of the SCA time frame. Um, currently, it is experiencing a renaissance in the Middle East where it started to begin with. And also there was a version of Ur, or at least a version of 20 squares that survived and a small Indian city that was populated largely by Jewish immigrants. Uh, but even that kind of died off in about the 1950s. So creating the board, creating the pieces, it's relatively easy. Um, most of the stuff can be done, can be picked up at a craft store. You know, make your board, draw it out on fabric, draw it on paper, uh, burn it on wood, whatever you want to do. You can create these really complicated and beautiful boxes that have shelves. Those are the most amazing ones where all the game pieces are actually contained in the board. But it can be as simple and basic as you want it to be. The only like not super common thing is going to be the D4, but with online shopping, with game stores, you can even and you know even polymer clays and 3D printing you can make your own D4 to play or at home, or you can also play it online, which is what we're gonna do. I actually, I, I took just the regular six out of dice and just marked three of the squares instead of two. It's like mathematically mm -hmm. the same difference because it's a half and a half. Yeah, you can, you can totally alter a D6 to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Those are generally easier to find blanks than they are the, uh, than the four sided. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or, or use this. Any, yeah, anything that where you can mark a yes or no. Like right. you could probably flip four coins and be like, all right, three heads, that means I get three. Yeah, it really is a binary system. Mm -hmm. So yay game. Awesome. Do we have any questions before we get started? Or? Uh, it's, it's, it's been a very quiet chat. So I'm good. And you guys actually covered some things I, I, that I don't cover in mind. So that was that was awesome. All I know is I saw a comment about Babylonian math, and yeah. I, I completely lost my mind over that because I don't, I don't, I don't do American math very well, let alone let Babylonian, let alone math. Base, base sixty. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. There we go. So we're making the board all pretty fine. But while we set this up, uh, everyone in there should absolutely subscribe to Cal Barter's Corner on YouTube. And you should also ring the bell so you don't miss any notifications because YouTube algorithms are kind of messed up. They really are. And if you're if you're a Facebook person, you should definitely give Cal Barter's Corner a thumbs up and follow it on Facebook. And don't forget patreon.com slash Cal Barter's Corner. Become a subscriber and support this amazing content. I'll send you a check later, Brian. I appreciate that. Preach. So, am I going first? You going first. Oh, and Bradley put in a uh, link to various dice. So yeah, you yes. can totally get stuff. You can go. You can go first, dear. You'll be the white pieces, and I'll be the black pieces. So on this set, it's really easy once you get used to it. The uh, this is uh, playonlinedicegames.com, and this also has a version of Senate and tons of other games. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a little hand on the bottom right. And you click, it's got the colored token for whose turn it is. And that becomes important if you get a second roll. Uh, but you click the little hand with the couple of triangles on it. Those are actually the dice. And it does your roll for you. It makes fun little rolling sounds, too. 
So I'm white. So the way this version goes is you click on your piece and it actually will tell you the options you have to go. Since I've rolled a two, I've got the two pips up. I want my guy on the board, so I will click where I want him. To. And this doesn't use any of the weird house rules where you have to enter on a certain roll or anything like that. This is just the bare minimum base set rules where no no squares mean anything other than the rosettes. So I also rolled a two. You will notice that two is the most common roll. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take my piece from the middle because this one lets me do that. <laughs> okay. And we now have uh, matching sides of the board. All right, so I oh, rolled a two. two. So I wouldn't be able to put a new piece on the board because I've already got a piece in my two slot and you can't stack on your own, just like you can't stack on another. But I can move this piece to more and it's gonna hit that rosette, which is awesome because that means I get to roll again. I hate that you went first. <laughs> So let's roll again. Another I get a two. two. It seems you're coming. And so then I can choose whether I advance this guy into the battleground aisle or if I put another piece onto the board. Um, knowing that my opponent can only get up to four, I could say, okay, it's uh, it's possible but unlikely that he'll get a four, but he could get two twos. So putting my my piece here is, you know, it's it's dangerous, but I think I'm gonna go for it. And it's not a conservative play. That is an aggressive play. It is. I like it. So you'll no you will notice that two is the most common roll. Hey, I got a three. Um, and that means I am safe because mm -hmm. with a roll of three, you can't get my guy. But uh, two is the most common roll, obviously, based on the, the permutations of the dice. Uh, Three and one are rare, but oh. not. Damn it! <laughs> no <laughs> table, table flip. Start no, it. no. So what has just happened is I want a divorce. <laughs> I can now. I can put a new piece onto the board, or I can take my piece and hit this middle rosette. So this middle rosette is the one we were mentioning earlier that has so much power because he can't land on my piece and take it. I have essentially blocked this piece. So if he were to roll a three, he could only bring a new piece onto the board. He would not be able to land on that rosette. In addition, I get to roll again. So I get to put a new piece on the board. I'm changing the lock. The roll four. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm done. I'm already done with this game. Uh, so, this wait, 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 wait. I need to see a one. We need a this one. This is where you see that strategy um, is part of it, but it's a whole lot of chance. Right. Yeah. And so, with, so I rolled a four. So I, I could have pushed my guy off the rosette and been very close to having one person off the board. However, I personally like to control the middle of the board. Um. So You're a I. Camper. I am a camper. Um, so I've, I've moved this guy here. Now I get to roll again, and I rolled a two. So with this two, I could move my guy off the rosette, which would leave it open for this guy. I could land right here, but there's a chance he could roll a one. Or I could put a new piece on the board, and that's what I'm choosing to do, because the more, for me, the more pieces I have in play, the, the faster I can get them off the board. So you'll notice she's in a much better position than I am. She has three pieces on the board, and I have one. So that works well for her in trying to get pieces off the board. That works against her, though, because she could come into a situation where she's got so many pieces on the board that she's gummed up the works, and she can't get on the board. She's not in that situation yet, but, but she close. could be. Yeah, because right now, if I roll a two... I would have to move. You have to move this rosette. Yeah, piece. move the one off the protected guy. rosette. Yeah. So if I roll three, I'm okay. If I roll a four, I would have to move either the guy I just put on or my rosette dude. So it's right. it's a balance, and also he can always come in behind me on the battleground and still wipe me out. Just because I'm on the board first doesn't mean I've won. Yeah. So one strategy that I use a lot playing against the computer is I'll hold my guys back and I'll stack this this entry row and let him get through and then I'll start taking out his pieces. 
But knowing my luck, zero and four are the least common rolls. But you will find if you play this for a while, zero is a lot more common than four, or at least it feels like it. So I'm probably going to roll a zero. Oh, I, I called it. I called it. Wow. That's a ticket right there. I am, oh. I am over. I am so over this game. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. So this is really nice for me tonight to not have to play and watch you have a table flip moments that I'm having yeah. happen recently. Yeah. So so now that I've rolled a two, I can go off the rosette. Yeah, you should do that. I yeah, can't move it. this guy at all. I can't put a new guy on, but I can also move this guy. And since I want to continue to control the rosette, because I don't trust Lady Luck, I, I will go there. She's she's a fickle beast sometimes. Must so. be a lady tonight. So I can move my piece up here behind, in between our two pieces and just hope she doesn't hit a one. And that would make me relatively safe because one's going to be a harder piece, a harder uh, roll. But that also sets me up to move down the board because as a black piece, I can't, uh, or as, as she's got that uh, rosette right there, if I roll a four, I can't move that piece at all. So the the white piece has that controlled. A three. Or yeah, a three. Sorry, not a four, a three. If I roll a four, I'm okay. I roll a two, I'm right there. But I kind of want to get more pieces on the board while I can. So I'm just going to place that guy there. And we'll see what happens in my miserable gameplay. Oh, how good for you. How nice. How pleasant. How wonderful. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> the best. I am so happy. I bought you this house so we can kick my ass. Do it. Do it. Oh. It's, 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 one of the, it's not necessarily the most advantageous move. Right. And so there's, there's taking this one or there's moving to here. Or putting a new piece on the board. Or putting a new piece on the board. Um... But I'm, I'm. It wouldn't actually be bad strategy to move this piece down the board just to clear some of the the section. Yeah, right now, if he rolls a three or a four, one of my two guys is toast. I can guarantee you, if you if I roll a four, I'm putting it on that rosette though. Yeah. Right. Oh, look, a one. That's so helpful for me right now. Just, just the best rolls. And so for me, when I look at this board, I'm like, okay, I need to get these two guys out of danger. Mm. So if I'm rolling anything that's not a four, I want to move those down. I want to move them out. But if I roll a four, I want to hit that rosette and get my second turn and then move them out of the way. Or I get a zero. Ah, and I then have to deal with, okay, is he going to roll a three or a four this time and take out one of my guys? So one thing that this... Uh, program doesn't do that I've seen some other programs do that I really like is actually counting the number of rolls each person gets so you can see exactly how many times did you get to re-roll I would all oh cool a one that's exactly what I need <laughs> <sighs> so uh, I couldn't do anything else because I was right here on this little five token um, and I already had a piece right here so I couldn't do anything other than move yeah. this piece on the second square over one because I couldn't bring any other piece on because that was already occupied and I can't move this guy because this space is already occupied. Um, but another thing that I would like to see is a breakdown of each player's role. So how many times did I roll a one? How many times did I get a zero? How many times did I get a four? And see how random number generated this game actually is. Uh, okay, so I've rolled a one. So I can move my piece into slightly more safety, or I could put another on the on the board. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move that. Um because now I just gotta roll a two or a three. So he's rolled a two. What would have been cool is a three or a one, so I could yeah. re-roll on that rosette, mm -hmm. but I'll knock you off the board and... and so see now I'm in imminent danger with this guy. So it is unlikely that I'm going to do anything other than hope to move this guy out of the way. 
Which means I'll roll one. I'll roll one or a zero. Nah. Three. Uh-huh. Three. Which puts no. him in safety. So no. this guy here, if he rolls a three, he can't advance this guy, but he can advance to the rosette. And there is so what, John? there is no way I can get her piece that's in front of the that's on the bridge right here. It is in this in this roll. Yeah, I can't get there in a single roll. Cool, a one. That's dandy, is what that is. That's just. I'm so happy I agreed to this. It's fun to lose. It's even better to lose on camera, isn't it? It's so so great. So I am actually because like you said he can't get me in one roll. So that guy sort Don't of use my words against me. So so that that piece is fairly safe for now. So I want to get a new piece on the board to replace the guy that he took off. But now that he's rolled a three, he can only either put a new piece on the board or advance. Oh no, he can't no, even can't, that. Can't can't piece, yeah. oh, yeah, I have to put a new piece on the board because this guy is blocked by the rosette in front of the bridge. And this guy on the little five light five blue pip. is blocked by the eight pip guy over here. So I've got to put somebody on these four eyes. <sighs> Hmm. Yeah, so I could put a new guy on, advance my one guy forward. Or advance the other guy or, forward. Or advance the other guy forward. I'm tempted to leave this guy on the on the five pip just because two is statistically more likely to happen, so I could mm-hmm. get my double roll. So I can move this guy one up. I could also move the rosette, but as we've just shown, it's advantageous to control that space. Thank you, dear, for being such a willing. Um... Hey, if you guys enjoy my misery, subscribe to Cowboy's Corner on YouTube and Facebook. Right. Support Cal on the Patreon. And Let me come back for some more misery later. Let me wallow in my misery. So that that was the only move that I had on three because I couldn't get a new piece on the board and I couldn't move any of the other pieces because the threes were blocked. So that that is a forced move. Right, so I've rolled a three. So I could move this guy and take this guy off the board. Move this guy. I can't move this guy. But if I move this guy, not only do I get closer, but I get to roll again. So you're closer to the exit. You're also safe. Yeah, because I'll that's be a safe. turn. Because these two, these two spaces are safe. They're no longer battleground. So I will move this guy. Boop, and take my second roll to. Oh, so. I probably would but have taken. I rolled a one. I'm happy for you. I am. I know, but I'm so I'm I'm one step like that is one out of seven pieces though, and this game really does go to the last. It does. It, it really can. So I am now. I can put a piece on the board, or I can try to make a mad dash to get my piece off the board. So I'm gonna try, so I can at least get one guy and put him there. Now, I'm kind of in a little bit of danger because if Elena rolls a one, she can totally knock my piece off the board. However, that's gonna let get her off of that rosette. So her coming off the rosette is relatively unlikely. So I'm gonna, I'm banking on the mm-hmm. fact that she's not going to jump off that rosette if she rolls a yeah. one. And since I've rolled a three, I have the option of taking this guy off the board or adding a new guy. And I don't like the fact that he's got more pieces in play, so I take this guy. Now the danger in this for her, I probably would have put another piece on the board because she is right at a crucial juncture where Mm -hmm. if I roll a three or I roll a two and a one, I can take her out. Or if I roll a four and a one or a four and a three. So there are combinations where I can take her out. Which you might get to show. So I might get to show that. I'm going to use this to take the second roll. Even if I don't roll something that will knock her off the board, if I don't roll that one, I can still try to move my guy down further. So I rolled a two. So I'm not going to take her out, and I'm going to kind of put myself in danger. So I'm going to move my piece further down the board to those four eyes. Yay, glasses, people. Four eyes. So I was sitting here looking at the like the different drawings, trying to come up with reasons why the the, because there's obviously numbers, right? And I'm not coming. 
Okay. So there is, uh, there was a Russian uh, guy who did a theory mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. the numbers meant, there's a whole system. It's like the okay. numbers are based okay. on um, whether you can stack tokens or whether you can, whether that's a safe space. Uh, some other things relate the numbers or the symbols to different animals, and the animals mean different things. Um, so that's it's a, it's a little odd. I don't know the full system. So I'm going to go ahead and do that since it gives me another roll. And there there are some there are some theories that the symbol the numbers don't really mean that much, but the symbols do. And some have said that the eyes are purely decorative because it's a common theme in this region and time period that eyes were just a decorative motif that they had all around. What I kind of want to do is create an Onstiorin or an SCA specific board. So we could do the rosettes as like a queen's rose. Right, that's what I do with mine was it was a Meridian, Meridian rose. But yeah, the, the symbols don't matter other than those rosettes. Dep uh, depending on what rule set you use, so I am now in a forced move right. because right. I can't put a I can't put a new piece on the board. I can't move this guy. I have to move this guy, and I can't move my piece at the very end off the board yet. So I have to move here, and I just hope that she doesn't roll a two. I hope she doesn't roll a two. Cool, she rolled a two. I hope that she moves a different piece now that she's rolled a two. I'd take me off the board. Yeah, sorry, dear. It's it's the best. It's the best move. Yeah, because even if I so I could take this guy and move here. Yeah. It's, it's it's still in danger. Yeah. Whereas if that. I take this guy off, the the danger is minimal. And you're also freeing up the rosette if you roll a four. The, the most disappointing thing is to roll that sweet four and have your rosette already be covered. Right. So I get to roll again. I am likely, but not guaranteed, to be able to knock one of her pieces yeah. off the board. I, I was hoping that you were... Oh, Me too, you were attached. You, you were hoping that I would roll a one. Oh. One or a zero. Oh. Well, she got the zero, so it was delayed... Gratification, delayed justice. Oh, look at that. Uh, so I rolled a one. I could have taken my piece at the very end on that last rosette off the board. I decided to go ahead and take her off the board because at this point I need to clear her out and get my dudes down the line. So I am in a bit of danger. I'm, I'm running a risk here by moving my piece in front of her piece on the rosette, especially since I don't have any backup. So she can freely take me out, but she gives up that rosette, but I don't have another piece on the board. So she could regain that rosette fairly easily before I can. Yeah, so here's my thoughts. I could take the two and just knock them out and, and hope this guy gets back over there. Or I could take the rosette, advancing my piece, getting my second roll and hoping for another two, which I don't receive. So I will... Hmm, Ooh. Go ahead and move him. I would put another piece on the board. Yeah, it's put mm -hmm. another piece. I'm playing. I'm playing more aggressively than I normally do. Um, I'm usually a, a a slow burn and then just pick them off. But so I rolled a one. I could get this piece off the board, but as she as we just saw, I am in imminent danger of that two roll, which is very common. So Elena could very easily roll a three and still take me out, but it is more likely that she'll roll a two. And she just rolled a three. I am the soothsayer of my own doom. But I'm also having to bet on getting a three next round. So well, I'm, I'm not even on the board, so it's any combination of things. Yeah. But you could roll a three. You could roll two four. You could roll two fours in a row. So actually, I think I'm going to allow it. And I'm going to put another piece on the board. Remember my benevolence when I otherwise beat you. So what was that, Cal? He's, he's going to allow you to live for another turn like that. Isn't that nice of her? Well, and some sometimes it's just a straight sacrifice. You've got to say, I'm going to let that piece go for the greater good. Uh, uh, safety's important. Safety's important. 
-hmm. I kind of want to put another piece on the board because I need to get my guys on, but safety matters right now because I am super behind. So a three. I probably should have put another piece on the board, but I'm I'm getting a little foolish and aggressive. Because and there we go. There we see why I should have put another piece on the board mm -hmm. instead of taking that. Come back to bite me in the tuchus. Go ahead and clear that out. So if I roll a one on my next roll, I can get another roll. I mean I'm not coming up anytime soon. Yeah. I'd have to roll a four and a three, or a one, a four, and a three. I look a one. But I have also played games where one player has their last token on the last spot, and they just have to roll a one, and I've gotten two of my guys off the board before they roll a one. The, the one that uh, Dr. Finkel played in one of his videos. He, he's like that. He's four pieces behind at one point and then ends up winning. So yeah, yeah. it's definitely There is a lot of chance. There's a lot of strategy. There's a lot of praying to certain Mesopotamian gods of chance. Getting the right ones. Is the right one. <laughs> Take a so she is taking a bit of a risk. We'll see. It's probably going to pay off for her. It did not this time. I don't know if using five pieces for this does it speeds the game up a lot. It doesn't really change its like the dynamic any. Um, but yeah, you, little, you, you cut off about 15, 20 minutes of it. Um, yeah, there is an app from. A guy, it's ancientgames.eu is his website, but he's got a phone app. And what's cool about his phone app is that he has a lot of different house rules you can play, including having to roll a one to get on the board, or um, like there's one where the board floods every now and again, and if your pieces aren't on a rosette, they wash away. Ooh, interesting. Um, yeah, it it's it's just a lot of random stuff, but it makes it it it's that added challenge and uh, suspense. That sounds like my PC Mario Party. <laughs> Probably, but it's it's so much fun. So if you look at my pieces right now, I am pretty close to gummed up. There's not a whole whole lot I can do. What I really want to do is move this guy down the board, but. With the one, I'm going to take the opportunity to get my guy off the board. So, arguably, I'm in the lead because I have two pieces off the board. Um, and I also have more pieces. Now, I used to have more pieces. But between my off the board and my currently on the board pieces, uh, I was technically ahead. But she is in a far better position than I am based on the control of the bridge and the fact that she has a piece very close. Uh, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. That was, <laughs> that was a terrible plan. I'm not going to do that. Oh, well, well, why not? It's not like it's statistically probable that I would have rolled a three or a two. Let's see. With a three, that will put me in some danger. That one, I can't move at all and I can't put a new one on. So I don't actually have a lot of options unless I want to give up the bridge and hope he doesn't roll one, which. That's a lot of risk. So I think I'd rather I, I'd rather risk two. So now I hope for a two because that will make knock her piece off the board and put me in relative safety. Cool, a three. And that's exactly what I wanted. <laughs> so I can put myself in front of her. I just play leapfrog. Or I can kind of insulate myself a little bit, which is what I'm going to do on this one and hope she doesn't roll a three. three. Or a one and a two. Whereas with my two, I'm definitely like getting out of danger, Will Robinson. So, so there, there can. Oh, it's <laughs> not a not a fantastic role for me. So there, there can be a little bit of this part of this game, like this part right now, where it's just kind of trudging along and seeing 
what happens. Dang. But yeah, I can see where doing five pieces instead of seven would move it a lot faster and kind of make it a little bit more exciting. Right. Yeah, five five does make it shorter. There's actually in that game that I, the app I was talking about, there's one where you essentially it may be a three piece game, like anywhere from three three to ten. Oh well. House rules, man. They are wild. But yeah, additional pieces, fewer pieces, or marking your pieces mm. to where, like I kind of mentioned earlier, if you put your, you have to get one off the board before you can get two off the board type of deal. There there can be different variations that really change up the gameplay on this. So I can see one where you have the pieces marked with either a one, two, three, or four, and they, they have to, that piece has to come in on that space, which change mm -hmm. up your strategy about when you bring certain pieces in. Would be interesting that, because that one and that four become a lot harder to bring in. Yeah, when you when you move pieces or instead of placing them. Hey, okay, cool four. There you go. Yeah. See, I figured if you rolled a four, you'd be mighty tempted by that rosette. Oh yeah. So now I I'm at a crossroads. Like uh, is that Bone Thugs in Harmony. I'll meet you at the crossroads. Do I take that rosette and get the extra roll knowing that it's a 99% chance? That's not the real probability, but knowing that I'm most likely not going to get another four, do I just take her off the board? So if she rolls a three, yeah. she's got a good chance of getting me off the board. However, I am only two away, which is the most common roll from taking that rosette if she leaves it. So does yeah. she risk it? Hell no. Does she risk it? Nope. Risk it. No. <laughs> Ah, no. Risk it for the brisket. There's no brisket. There is a lot of... There is ribs, though. Yeah, we do have ribs. <laughs> my, my vigil piece. Yeah, the, the, my dad's a cooking pelican. And so he was making, he made barbecue for her vigil elevation that didn't happen. So we right. got to take the ribs. Keep tempting me with these threes, man. <sighs> So I'm relatively safe because a one is an unlikely roll. And so she can't get me with that one unless she rolls a three and a three or a three and a one. Um, so I'm not that worried. I'm a little worried, but not terribly worried. And I rolled the one. So <sighs> do, I, do I put it on two? I put this guy, move this guy over one to set myself up for a two moving to the rosette, or do I just try to get this guy a little bit more out of danger? I'll just try to clear up the board a little bit. There's the one. I told you. Mm -hmm. I told you. I, I proclaimed it. So she's unlikely to get it. Therefore, it shall happen. So I'm hoping, I have four, I'll take it. So I can use this four, one, two, three, four, and go off the board. What I will do instead is go for my reroll, take that rosette in the corner, and raspberries. I was hoping for at least a two. So now if she rolls a four, that piece at the very end for me is gone. Thankfully, she didn't roll a four. I just need to not roll a four and I can get that piece out of harm's way. It would have been so funny if I rolled a four. Mm -hmm. So now I get to roll again. And I'll just, uh, I need pieces on the board, but I also need to clear that. I'll just clear that. Pieces off the board is better than it. It, it's one of those, I'm safe, I've got time, because right. she's not, she doesn't have a bunch of pieces off the board. I'm technically in the lead, though we've got the same number of pieces either on the board or completed the track. Now I'm, I'm arguably in a slightly yeah. better position than her, though control, I put a lot of stock in control of that bridge, that rosette before the bridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a very it, it makes a huge difference, it really does. Yeah, end game especially, it can be, it can be rough. 
I, I, it has looked like I am super losing, but because I control that middle rosette, I can kind of run the board almost. I'm not liking my options right now. But see, when we looked at the game earlier, I was clearly getting demolished. Right. Like I was absolutely wrecked. I should not have been so benevolent. Ugh. I weep for you, really, with your one. These tears, let me collect them for you. So much salt over there, I love it. <laughs> this is why we don't play board games at home. Right. Oh, a... So she, she, this oh. is now a fourth move. She has to give up the rosette. Oh, no. Because she has, her number, her four slot is mm -hmm. already occupied. Yep. So she has to give up the rosette. Balls. Roll a three. Balls! Oh, how the how tide bad. have turned. How bad would I have been if I accidentally clicked on this one? We have played the game before on the app where uh, she actually clicked the wrong piece. Mm -hmm. She had a piece like these two up here, and she meant to click this piece and accidentally clicked that piece and cleared the rosette for me. There are no undos in in the uh, in the app or in this version. There, there's no undos in board games. You know, oops. It's like chess, man. There's no there's mulligans. No thing. This isn't golf. That's right. There's no mulligans. This is a little weird for me because I I often play against the computer, and you're always the white piece. Right. So now I'm a little. It's a little different for me. Playing as the black pieces, going second, because I'm used to going first. But it's a learning experience that will make me a better game. Something. Games is this? Is that the proper word for that? No. It is now. We're, we're declaring it. So I'm I'm safe. I'm super safe right here in this, and my guy on the bridge. Because she cannot get to me in a single roll. Full stop. Can't do it. And she doesn't have options for re-rolls. Because that a rosette is occupied. So do I move this piece down the board? I'm not putting this guy in the danger zone. I'm not giving up the rosette. But do I move that guy further in? I'm gonna just I'm gonna just trug along and push my guy further down and, and closer to the, the Exit, or the Utganger, as they say in Iceland. So I can go there or there. <laughs> I didn't know we were having Icelandic education tonight, too. Look at that. So I fell in love with Iceland, and that's also why I, I developed a pseudo secondary persona mm -hmm. because Iceland is amazing. Uh, my law school had an Icelandic exchange program, and I got to live in Iceland for a week. Oh, cool. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And we also just watched the Eurovision movie on Netflix. Oh, my God, that was hilarious. Absolutely ridiculous. So I've got a four here. I can move this guy and clear him down the board. But if she rolls... A three, I'd be screwed. If she rolls a two, I'm screwed, so I should probably move this piece. I cannot move this piece. I don't have another piece to put on the board, and it's blocked anyway. And this guy, that's not going to help me out. So I just want to go ahead and get this guy off the board. I am now two pieces ahead of her, but she has got two pieces in a really good position to get off the board. And if she's smart, she'll get that piece off the board. So now I'm in a little bit of danger because I'm going to have to move one of my pieces into the battleground or give up my rosette. Or I roll a zero. Yes. I was going to laugh so hard if I roll a zero. So here's Take where... Take her out. Here's where do I, do I go super aggressive and knock her off the board? Do it. If I had... 
another piece in the battleground ready to take that spot, I would. If I'd had those two pieces inside the, the battleground line, I would have gone ahead and done it. So I'm okay with giving up that piece and keeping my rosette. Oh, especially when. Yeah. And back to where we were. Okay. Yeah. So I just told her what my strategy was. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention. Fair enough. I just told her what my strategy was. So if she would have moved this piece further down the board, I would have probably taken it had I acquired the opportunity to do so. Oh, hey, look, I've acquired the opportunity mm -hmm. to do so. This is super risky. Super risky. I'm playing aggressive. Oh, and it oh, may have paid off. Three. Three. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah! Everything's coming up, Millhouse. Do I get on the board or do I? I'm gonna go ahead and move that guy down. Just put put along. Just put yep. Along. So I'm gonna do my best to get this. I'm super safe with this piece down here right now. There is nothing that she can do in two rolls that will get to me, right? Yeah, nothing Nothing mm -hmm. in two rolls will get to me. So I am going to board. just try to get a piece on the board. Now, if I roll a four, I don't have much option. I don't, I don't have many options if I roll a four right now. I hope for a three or a two. Zero. Cool. That's always fun. I like losing turns. It, it is the best. Man. It's my favorite. Two zeros in a row. Great. I'm so happy I did this. So now I'm getting in a little bit of danger. I need to move this guy mm -hmm. out of the way. So I need to roll a one, two, or a three. Hey, look, a two. I'm going to go ahead and take that. So having it be need a one to get off the board makes it a little tougher, but... Oh, jeez. I was about the, to mention the, the double awesome. rosettes. There you go. It's, it's not losing turns. It's gaining time to contemplate. Yeah. It's, a, mm. it's, it's like allowing the opportunity for my... It's allowing the opportunity for my opponent to screw up. That's right. what it is. We'll go with that. Raspberries. <laughs> See, and if I hadn't gained that time to contemplate, <laughs> right. I could have moved some pieces off the board or at least further down. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that out because I just might as well. Mm. Now I need to do everything in my power to go ahead and get my guy off the board on the board in a, a non-risky situation because we're going to come close to a time where I'm going to be forced to move off the rosette. I'm either going to get in a position where I roll something where I can't re-roll or uh, I can't move because I'm backed up against the rosette or I've got this guy off the board. And as I say that, I'm going to get this piece knocked off the board repeatedly. So it's not a terrible roll because the rolls that would you let her take me out are unlikely. Yeah, I'd have to get a one or a four. It's not great. I was gonna laugh so hard. <laughs> roll the one. There's still time. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> that's that's fairly that's fairly lucky. So now comes if I roll a two, do I back this guy up behind the rosette or do I take her piece out? What do I do? Ooh. If I roll a four, I get the rosette. Yeah. I'm taking a risk. This is a risk. Yeah. <laughs> oh. If I roll a three, I get the rosette. This is not how this game is supposed to work. Oh, yeah, don't, yeah. don't you reach for that mouse. It is still my turn. 
I mean, I love you, dear. Uh-huh. You're the best. You're the favorite. Yeah, I hope you find the ottoman comfortable. No, Tilly's been on that. I'm, I'm taking the couch. <laughs> So I, I am now at a forced roll. I cannot move a four yeah. because I've got to roll a two to get this guy off the board. So I have got to move this piece off the rosette, but I'm in a relative safe space. Right. Yeah, the likelihood of being, me being able to get to him. Yeah, you'd have to roll a three yeah. and then a, you'd have to roll a combination of one, three, and four or one and four to get there. So I'm hoping for a two or a three I'm right now. There it is. There's your two. Yep. Well, there's my two. So I am in a great position to win, but it is far from guaranteed. Rolling a one right here makes it a lot more likely that I'm going to yeah. win. This two is super easy. So I'm hoping... Uh, especially when I roll things like that. Oh. I'm hoping for a two or a, a one three, will work. Three a four. three or a four will absolutely not be cool. Hey, look. And so this program actually... Just zeroed out my turn because I didn't have a move to make. It didn't, like it didn't a even let me look a crying noise for you. Yeah, kind of a, a sad gloop. <laughs> so this is something we didn't really touch on. You have to move if you can. Right. There is no pass. You cannot pass a turn. So I have got to roll here. Which sure it gets me closer, but now it means I have to roll a one to get off the board. And I didn't. So now it's it's. This is where it's the racingest of races. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> uh, Elaine is taking the uh, the tortoise approach to racing today. Yeah, I, I mean, it's not that's not a terrible strategy with what I'm getting right now. So, and this is a situation like you were talking about, Cal, with uh, Dr. Finkel, where he had four pieces, you know, he was four pieces behind and still came back and won. It is highly unlikely that she will be able to do that, but as we've shown through this game, highly unlikely is still quite possible. I would also love to, I, I'm going to have to go back and rewatch this to see how many rolls it takes me to get to that one. Yeah. She's just gonna trudge along now. I uh, this is this is where I quote Christian Bale in his Batman rant or his Terminator rant. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Mm-hmm. Was it good for you? Oh, because it's ruined now. That's a that's a timely reference. <sighs> Almost all the results are covered right now. Mm-hmm. Hooray! Oh. Game over. There it is. Yeah. Click it. Ding. Yep. So you, you can see where someone can absolutely be getting wrecked and demolished at the beginning of the game and still come back and win. Um, but we were also at a point where Elena very easily could have continued as I just got unlucky roll after unlucky roll. So probably, probably two more turns that might have been a tight game. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was this was a competitive game. We have had we have played games where I've literally just said I'm done. Like I'm five pieces behind at this point. You win, I concede. But there are also for as many games that were is like this one didn't feel as tight, but right. there are some where like you're literally just battling for that last piece to get off. Yeah, you're you're trading um, trading pieces pretty much in the middle of the board. Awesome. That was a lot of fun, guys. I appreciate y'all uh, you know, doing that for me. Um, Thanks, so, guys. That's, that's the Royal Game of Ur. There you go. This, this is honestly one of my favorite race games uh, because of that. Like, it's super easy to learn and super easy to play. But yeah, it is like, you know, it's super competitive in the last couple pieces. Um, I definitely think playing with five is much better for a, for a, a, a short game. Just gets, keeps you engaged a little better. Um, and then yeah, I'd like to see the different dice variants. Like we, I, we, we played it. We played it backwards, and we also played it with uh, the D six and the D four. Math wise, was the same one. Like we also, you could, changing the numbers of pips would change things. Like there's so much you could do with it. And then you know, add drinking games, add shots, adding adding booze to any game makes it more inter- entertaining. 
Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you there is some element of strategy that needs to be employed. Right. right. But only if you're a legal drinking age. Yes. It's true. And don't says gamble. The guy, says, says the guy who is a lawyer and needs yes. to say that. I didn't hear nothing. I wasn't even here today. Not, not even on the stream. There's no proof. No. Fair All right, enough. guys. There's it's all been video evidence. We're going to sign off. So tune in uh, next week. Uh, so next week, we're going to have uh, Lady Catherine Throckmorton, our, uh, one of our, our avid viewers, is going to be teaching us a Greek and Roman game, uh, Ludus Lantrung, something or other. Um, basically, it's a whole bunch of variations of, of like checkers like games. So. That's going to be a lot of fun. So we're basically going to play at least six different games and see which one we like best. So awesome. you guys tune in. I expect you to be watching next week. Absolutely. They, at some point, if, if not live, a replay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so then, yeah. So appreciate you guys coming out. Um, and all the things Brian said earlier, like, like follow, subscribe on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube. Um, if you're feeling generous, go to the Patreon. It's totally not necessary, but it's there if you want to throw some money at me so I can buy some cool new lights and stuff. I don't know. I'll buy some new, new things with it. Um, and that's that. So this has been Cal Barter and Brian and Elena in Cal Barter's Corner. Oh, no. I lost my button. Hold on. <laughs>